the protests in China, they say this is all about the COVID-19 measures. It is and it isn't. It's about slavery. That's what this is really all about. This started, um, you know, bubbling here recently. Then there was a fire, and I don't know if you've seen, but they are bolting people into their houses. You, you can open the doors. These fi- this fire was raging through an apartment complex. Nobody could get out because the state had locked the doors from the outside. That didn't go over real well. Then the people at Foxconn heard that there was coming uh, another uh, zero COVID lockdown was coming. Now, these people have been in lockdown for about two years. Two years. So, you know, Foxconn is the wonderful place where they make all of the Apple products. Oh, Apple should be so proud. Um, They have everything you need in, you know, in that building. So you sleep on one floor, you eat on another floor, you maybe watch a movie on floor four, and of course you do all your work on floor one. It's tremendous. You never, ever have to leave the building. Well, people heard that there was another lockdown coming and they started jumping the fence. Now, because they have social credit systems where you have to have your iPhone or your cell phone and it tracks you and it gives you either a red or a green red means you got COVID, but not really, not really. That's what the state says, but they are changing things to be able to control people. Again, the zero COVID is not about COVID. It's about control. So they started jumping the fence, but they couldn't get onto a train or a bus. They weren't running. And if they could get on, their little red uh, badge said you couldn't actually board. So they just started walking and they started walking on the highway. The state got very upset and said, hey, Foxconn, you got to clean this up. And so the Foxconn, which is basically the state, said, we're going to offer Four times the bonus. If everybody would just come and work, just apply, you get four times the bonus. Oh, do the people who stayed at Foxconn, do they get the bonus too? No, discontent. Then all these new people were hired. What happened? Oh, we no, there was a misunderstanding. I'm sorry. Is Mandarin your first language? Oh, it is? Well, there was a translation problem. You're not getting four times the bonus. That's when everybody went crazy. They all jumped the fence and they they left. Now, this is not Tiananmen Square. And this is really important that you understand. Tiananmen Square ended in 1989. This is much larger than that. The number of regions in China and the number of people that are participating in 1989, there was no Internet. There was no mobile phone. So compared to then, today, hundreds of millions of Chinese are aware of what's going on. Most Chinese in 1989 learned about Tiananmen in the next school year, if they ever heard about it at all. But at the time of the protests, only 2% of the Chinese population even knew anything about them. It's key to remember Tiananmen wasn't a protest that happened over a single day or weekend. The, um, the uh, protest took nearly two months before they rolled the tanks out. So we may be in just the first inning here, but this is getting out of control in China. So protester uh, or a worker protest at Foxconn, the Apple factory. By the way, Apple... They really care about the people. Man, they are so, they're so enlightened. They're so great. I, as an artist, I can only use an Apple product because they just get me as an artist, you know? And that's why I was so proud to see that they, they shut off the airdrop ability in China. Now, why would you do that? Well, because that's a way you can, you can communicate with other people without having it tracked. And 
Apple is so one with humanity and the earth and what's good and right. They wanted to make sure that the government could track every word, every image, everything. They needed, you know, Xi Jinping, he gets a bad name. And they just want to help him out a bit. So congratulations, Apple. So for several weeks, this has been going on. It went from tens of thousands of Foxconn workers to hundreds of thousands of other people in the area. But the protest was still primarily about removing the zero COVID restrictions. But then over just a couple more days, something changed. This has now evolved into an anti-CCP protest, and that's not done. Up until two weeks ago, protesters publicly called for the end of Xi Jinping's rule and the end of the Communist Party, and it would have been pretty much done, disappeared by the secret police, likely put to death. But over the last few days, over the weekend, thousands of protesters have taken to the streets to scream those exact demands, spray painting the same on the sides of government buildings, even posting down with the CCP online. This has not been seen since Tiananmen. 